Have you ever recorded some dialogue and it just sounds awful? I sure have. Maybe it sounds a little thin, maybe a little echoey. Maybe you think it's just unusable. Now, imagine being able to replace that dialogue with your own voice, but it is crystal clear and sounds amazing. That's exactly what you can do in DaVinci Resolve 20 using their new AI voice convert tool. Whether you're trying to fix a rough cut or maybe you just want more control over how that dialogue sounds, this tool allows you to swap out your voice for a whole completely different voice or even a custom voice model trained on your own voice. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use the AI voice presets to convert your voice into another voice. And I'll show you how to train your own voice model so you can replace your rough recordings with a clean, polished sound in your videos. This video is sponsored by Motion Array and all of the sounds and visuals that you'll see in this video come right from Motion Array. So if you are looking to level up your videos with Pro Tools, check out Motion Array. I'll leave a link down in the description below. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and test out this new AI voice convert tool. So in DaVinci Resolve here, I'm currently in the edit tab and that's where we're gonna be working with the new AI voice convert tool. So there's a couple different ways that you can use the new AI voice convert tool. And the first way that I'm gonna show you is to just replace your dialogue or the dialogue in your particular clip with one of the AI preset voices. Now, I think this is gonna work best when maybe you're not on camera, right? Because if you change your voice completely, it may look a little bit weird. Now, if you don't know how the person sounds that you're watching, it could probably work out pretty well. But in this case, in my first example, I'm just out in the woods kind of filming some things and adding a little commentary. For something like that, I think it's perfectly fine to go ahead and change my voice to something that sounds a little bit better. So I've got just a couple clips here where we're looking in the forest at a couple different things. And the first thing that I want to do is bring in all of your video clips with your raw audio. And in this case, my audio levels were pretty Pretty low. Let me just play a, a second of it here. You can hear what that sounds like, but look at my meters and we're going to see the audio levels are pretty low. Look around the forest in New Jersey. So we're around like minus 30 dB. First thing you want to do is set those audio levels to somewhere that makes a little more sense. So I'm just going to select my clips and you can do this one at a time or I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to right click and just to do this the quickest way possible, we're going to say normalize audio levels. And then I like to use the sample peak program because it's going to set my target level around minus nine dB, which is where I recommend putting your dialogue. So I'm just going to go ahead and say normalize. And now it's going to do a good enough job for us. Here's what it sounds like. Raw record, raw recording right out of the camera. If you look around the forest in New Jersey here, came across this. We've got a nice perfectly shaped woodpecker house right there in that tree. All right, not too bad, okay? So what do we wanna do? We wanna use the AI ver voice convert tool to make it sound better. We wanna use one of the AI voice presets. So the first thing that we need to do is select the clips we want to convert. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all these clips. It's okay if you grab the video part two, not a big deal. Next, you wanna come on up to clip, come down to AI tools and we have voice convert right here. So go ahead and click on that. And that's gonna bring up our voice convert window. Now let's just run over real quick what is going on in this window. So we've got our track right here. So do you wanna put your new recording onto a new track? And if you had track names here, you can select the track that you want. I'm just gonna say new track, but we can also render it in place. So it would replace the audio that's currently in my track. I don't wanna replace it just in case I ever need to go back to my original audio. I just want it there. I can mute it for now. Not a big deal, but I'm gonna say put it on a new track. And now the way it's gonna make the file name, we can see right here, it's gonna do a clip name and a model name. That's fine, I'm good with that. Now down the next section, we have voice model. New voice model is one that I created, which I'm gonna show you how to create in a little bit. But the default presets we have are female one US, female two US, male one US and male two US. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick male one US. Now in all the samples and, and things I've tried, I've always left this on tight matching to source, and that's gonna match up the dialogue pretty close with your video, especially if you're speaking on the video. But um, I just leave that checked on and you can change the pitch if you want, but because we're using the male model that was already in DaVinci Resolve, I'm just gonna leave it how it is. And now all you have to do is hit render. Resolve's gonna take a few minutes uh, or seconds, depends how many clips you're doing. In this case, it looks like about a minute. It's gonna go through your clips, analyze them, and then replace the dialogue with that new voice that's in the AI convert tool. So I'm gonna 
give it a second here and then I'm going to show you what that sounds like. So now once that tool is done analyzing and replacing the dialogue, you can see it's automatically going to disable my audio clips, my original audio clips. And if I scroll down, we now have a new track with these new audio clips in it. So let's just play through it and you can hear how it sounds. If we look around the forest in New Jersey here, came across this. We've got a nice, perfectly shaped woodpecker house right there in that tree. Perfect for late raising your little woodpecker family. One thing I don't like about the Jersey wildlife is those pesky deer. They eat all my hostas, then I'll spray them. Pretty amazing, right? Now, that sounds great. So if I'm not on screen and I want a voice with a little more gravitas, I want it to sound a little bit better, that is perfect. I mean, what a great voice there that you've got now that can narrate or whatever. And it's going to have the inflections and the sound of your voice, right? So if I come back up and I just mute this track and I listen to my own voice right here, I'm going to press the letter D key twice to re-enable the clip here. Listen to the difference. One thing I don't like about the Jersey wildlife is those pesky deer. They eat all my hostas if I don't spray them. All right, so that's what that sounds like. And now if I play the one with the AI voice... One thing I don't like about the Jersey wildlife is those pesky deer. They eat. You can hear the inflections of my voice in that new AI model there with the new AI voice. I mean, it does a fantastic job. I think it's really great. Now, if you wanted to use one of the other voice models, no problem there. We can always just turn this clip back on. I could select it, right click again, and I could go to voice convert right here. Again, we've got our same window. Let's say I want it to be a female. I'm going to pick female too. I'm just going to go ahead and say render. And notice it's going to go on a new track because that's what I have selected. And here's what that sounds like. One thing I don't like about the Jersey wildlife is those pesky deer. They eat all my hostas if I don't spray them. It's still got the inflections in my voice. And I think it, I mean, it sounds good. It, it sounds great. So you guys know I love me some good audio. And if you're doing some kind of video where you're narrating, maybe you're not directly on screen, you want a voice with a little more gravitas, I think that using these AI models that are in the AI voice convert work out really well. And I mean, you could select your all the audio in your whole project, do it all at once if you wanted. It's going to take some time. It does use a bunch of resources on your machine, so keep that in mind. But it works amazing. I think I would totally use this uh, if, you know, I was doing something where I wasn't on screen. Because if I'm on screen, it looks a little weird. Which I'll show you, uh, you know, in the next example that I have. Uh, but overall, I think this works really good and does a good job. It matches the inflections and the tone of my voice, but it just makes it sound like a different voice. So if you're looking for that kind of use, I think that this tool is amazing for that. Now, before I show you how to create and model your own voice and how we can take a recording that's not so good and make it awesome, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, and that is Motion Array. Every music and sound effect and overlay that you see in this video, as well as a whole lot of my other videos, come from Motion Array. Been using Motion Array for a long time. They even have a free account. You can get some free assets from them. And probably one of my favorite parts of Motion Array is all of the overlays that they have. I love all that stuff and the stock little clips and animations and things they're great i love them i use them all the time in all my videos so whether you're building tutorials client videos a short film maybe motion ray has all pro level assets that are really just going to help take your project to the next level all available in one easy subscription i know i hate jumping around to different services for all different assets so motion ray has everything in one spot for you if you're interested in checking them out i'll leave a link down in the description below and honestly i think if you did check them out i don't think you would be disappointed Pointed. I mean, I love them. I used them when they were free. You can download some free assets there, give it a try before you even have to pay for anything if you want. A big thank you to Motion Ray for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go create our custom AI voice of yourself so that we can replace junky dialogue with awesome dialogue. Let's check it out. So the next part of the AI voice convert tool here is modeling our own voice. Now I was super impressed with how this worked out and I think you guys are gonna find it equally as impressive once we go through our example here. So let's jump into first creating our voice model after ourselves. So I'm going to do it for me. You would do it for you. And then we're going to be able to apply that to our own audio clip where our audio wasn't recorded so well. I actually just recorded it with the internal microphone on my camera, which sounds like garbage. So we're going to replace it to make it sound really good. So what do we need to get started? First, you need about, they say, 10 minutes of a good, high quality recording without any editing, without any compression or dynamics on it. About 10 minutes of a clip like that of yourself talking. I mean, 
I mean, you could read a book, you could take a part of another video. For me, I went and I grabbed a little section of the DaVinci Resolve podcast because I use a good microphone. I like the way it sounds. It sounds really full, sounds great. Um, you know, when I record using that mic for the DaVinci Resolve podcast. So I cut out actually about a, about a five minute section there. Let's jump in Resolve, I'll show you what I got. So in Resolve here, this is the little section I cut out of the DaVinci Resolve podcast. And that's what I want DaVinci Resolve to look at, learn from, and then model my voice after. And here's what that sounds like. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the DaVinci Resolve podcast here where I answer. So you can hear it's really clean. It's, it's uh, you know, got some body to it. It sounds good. So in order to use this clip, what I got to do is come into your media pool. And again, I'm in the edit page here where I'm doing all this. So in the media pool, I want to find that particular clip. Now, the whole recording originally was a whole lot longer. So I just cut out a little part and rendered out just this little five minute section. So I was able to have a podcast training is what I called it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this. Now, one word of advice, it does take a long time for Resolve to train itself and learn your voice and create that voice model. So you don't want to use a clip that's like, you know, a half hour long or something. I mean, it'll probably take overnight, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know how long it'll take, but it'll be long. So when you right click, you want to come down to AI tools, and then we have DaVinci AI voice training. Go ahead and click on that. Now, when you do that, you're going to get this message right here. It gives you, you know, a little bit of uh, warning and it says, make sure you've got the rights to your voice, right? Because if you're training, you know, DaVinci Resolve to make, you know, a voice that sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? You can't, you can't just steal somebody's voice. Although, unfortunately, I'm sure that's going to happen, but you can't steal somebody's voice without the rights to use that voice. Like, don't go taking my voice from my videos and making your own AI model with it and saying you're me. Don't do that, okay? Because I'm going to come after you. I'm going to come after you. But you just need to know that, right? So, I mean, common sense here, right? So I'm just going to say accept because I'm doing my own voice. So now when we get this window right here, the DaVinci AI voice training, we've got a voice name so we can call it whatever we want. I'm going to call it Jay's voice. Now you can change the way that it trains itself, right? There's a faster method and a better method. And from what I've read in the book, the better method takes about three times as long as the faster method, which still takes a little while. The faster method, it's faster. Um, I think if I was gonna do it once, I would definitely do it on better. But in this case, I'm gonna do it on faster just so we can get done a little bit quicker here and I can keep on recording this video for you. Then below that, it just tells us the file name of the file that we wanna use. And then all you have to do is hit start. So now it's going to generate the voice model. It's preparing, it's thinking, it's going to run through and analyze it really quick. And then it's going to create it in the background. And you'll know that because you're going to see a little icon at the bottom of the screen here. I'm going to show you in a second. So once this five minute clip is prepared, this is going to end. This window will go away. And then what we're going to see is a window that says this AI voice model generation. Jay's voice voice model generation process has been launched in the background. Now, I would recommend that you walk away from your computer for a little while and just let it do its thing. And if we look down at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, we see this little icon right here. We can click on that and that's going to tell us, is it um, working on the model and how much is it done? So you can see right here, it says it's going to take about an hour and a minute to create this voice model of me, right? And it's only a five minute clip. So you figure if you did 10 minutes like they recommend in the uh, manual, then it's probably going to take two hours, I guess. Um, but you can see right here, it's going to take that hour, create the voice, and then we're going to be able to use Use that voice to replace dialogue. So I'm actually just going to cancel this because I've done it before. So I have a trained voice model already, and I don't want to wait an hour to finish up this video for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and hit discard right now. But once the model is done, that little icon that sits down here is going to disappear, and then you'll know that it's ready to go. So now let's take a look at another sample clip right here. So I have a clip here that I recorded just using the built-in microphone on my 5D Mark IV. It sounds horrible, but before we even start to listen to it, let's set our audio levels just like we we did in the previous example. I'm going to select their clip, right click. I'm going to go to normalize audio levels. We're going to leave it at sample peak. I'm going to say normalize. Boom, it looks like we're pretty good. So here's what it sounds like recorded using the on camera mic without any kind of external mic. Here we go. So if you are like me, you live in New Jersey, we've got mosquitoes everywhere going on. So my buddy Isaiah 
from EcoFusion. All right, it's rough, right? That it doesn't sound good. Now I want to replace that dialogue with the dialogue that I recorded on my podcast. It sounds great and everything. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is select my clip. I'm going to right click, come up to voice convert. And now we've got our voice convert window here. And now in the voice model, I'm gonna click the drop down here. And instead of doing one of the four presets, I'm gonna use my new voice model, which is the one that I've already previously did. If I let that new one run, then I would see Jay's voice pop up right here. So I'm gonna select new voice model, type matching to source, good, pitch, I'm gonna leave the same. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit render. Now Resolve is gonna analyze it, do its thing. And then you gotta hear the difference here and see how it matches up. It's gonna look great. So let's let this run and I'm going to show you how the results are when it's finished. All right, there we go. It's all done. And just as in the first example, it muted the original audio and on a new track, we've got the new dialogue. So take a listen to this. So if you are like me, you live in New Jersey, we've got mosquitoes everywhere going on. So my buddy Isaiah from EcoFusion came out and actually built this little mosquito trap for me in addition to doing a little spray and check this out over here. I mean, it sounds pretty good. It sounds just like me. It matches up well. And if it looks like it's not, it could just be the screen recording, but in real life here, it actually does match up pretty well from everything that I can tell with how I'm speaking and what I'm saying in my mouth and all that kind of stuff. Like the audio and the visual matches up pretty good. So if it doesn't look like that on your end, it's just because of the screen recording. It's really amazing that you can do that. The first time that I did this, I replaced my own voice, you know, from the, 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 recording that was not that great with the dialogue that I created using the AI voice convert tool, I was like, whoa, dude, that's amazing. Think about if you're filming a short film or you're filming some kind of scene for a movie or something like that. You only have scratch audio that, you know, doesn't sound great. You can have your talent or your actor, or whoever, record their voice on a high quality microphone, have DaVinci Resolve train for an AI voice of that person, and then you can replace their dialogue so that way you've got pristine, awesome sounding audio for that person just using the scratch audio that you might have used to film your scene. Really amazing, it does a fantastic job. I gotta say that this is probably one of the best AI tools uh, when it comes to the audio stuff that I've seen so far. And really, I don't have anything bad to say about it. I mean, I think it works the way I would expect it to. I haven't run into any problems with it. I think it does a really good job uh, with just converting those, converting the voices and just keeping the inflections of my voice and that kind of stuff. Uh, the only downside could be is that, you know, somebody could steal your voice or more like, yeah, James Earl Jones voice, or Schwarzenegger, you know, people like that, like people can just steal their voice, right? There should be some way to prevent that. I don't know how you would do that, but maybe some way there, there, there's some kind of like, you know, whatever securities in place where you can't do that. but. That's the only downside that I've seen. One more quick thing that I do wanna show you as a bonus tip here is you have to download some extras here um, right through DaVinci Resolve just to make sure you can use the AI voice train. So check this out real quick. So you wanna come on up to your DaVinci Resolve menu right here and then come down to Extras Download Manager. Go ahead and open that up and you're gonna see a couple things in here that uh, you'll need in order to do the AI voice training. For example, this right here, it's like 668 megs, it says. Now I've downloaded it. There was an old outdated version when they first launched DaVinci Resolve 20 that's since been updated. So I can actually delete that because I don't need that. Um, but you've also got extended AI transcription language support. So. From time to time, you're probably gonna wanna check this. Now this is an extra two gigs of space that's gonna get taken up on your hard drive and not everybody needs these tools, so you don't need to download them. And that's why Blackmagic Design gave you the option. So that way, if you are gonna use the voice training or the extended AI transcriptions, go ahead and download those things. Uh, but if you're really tight on space and you don't wanna do that, uh, you know, you don't have to download them. But I would recommend that you do just so you can use the tools. And from time to time, I jump in here and check it out because uh, I don't know that it automatically updates for you if there's any updates. So you need to have these downloaded for the voice training uh, if you want to do that. If you ever struggle with bad recordings that are noisy or echoey, this tool, the AI Convert, just might save your footage and allow you to be able to continue on with your project. Leave me a comment below with your worst audio disaster. I want to know what happened. How'd you fix it if you were able to? Do you think this tool would help you? And who knows, in the future, I might even reach out to you and say, hey, let me get that junky audio clip that you had. I want to see if I can fix it and share with the rest of our viewers out there on how we do that. Now, if you want to check out more tips and tricks in DaVinci Resolve, you might want to check out that video, or you want to learn more about some of the AI tools, check out those videos over there. I love me some good audio. 
I will see you in the next video. Peace.